In this video, I will be performing basic malware analysis on the YouTube sponsorship scam taking over YouTube channels. I download three different samples provided in phishing emails and see what happens upon execution. All right, so if you've been following recent security news or just browsing YouTube, you probably know by now that fellow tech YouTuber Linus Tech Tips, as well as some of his sister channels, they got hacked. Now, unfortunately, this was through a fraudulent sponsorship PDF that was delivered to his employees. I'm not really going to go over uh, what happened. He has an official video out on his YouTube channel, as well as other people on YouTube have posted an analysis of what happened. So in today's video, what I really want to talk about is the greater issue of just sponsorship offers. And um, I'm going to be analyzing three different variants in an isolated malware analysis lab and doing some basic analysis on what exactly happens so yeah let's take a look into what happens if you are somebody who posts on youtube and gets these fraudulent sponsorship queries so to set up this isolated malware environment i'm running my old pc that has ubuntu 18 running on it and then it has vmware workstation with a virtual machine that is disconnected to the internet. It's a very dodgy system and I don't know if I recommend it, but this is what I am doing. So um, let's go ahead and analyze these three malware variants and I have some basic programs running in the background. So starting out on my YouTube channel, of course, uh, all YouTube channels have the opportunity for business and queries. And so the, of course my email address has always been open to the public any company or individual can contact me on this email. So oftentimes I get a lot of phishing emails impersonating a certain brand. And in the last three months here, I have flagged just a couple of variants, but I get these basically on a daily basis. And most of the times you can obviously tell that they're phishing emails. Um, so here in front of me, I, like I said, will be investigating three different variants, uh, although two of them are basically the same. But we're going to start out with this PC provider um, that builds PCs. So one interesting thing that these people do is they typically send an original email that doesn't have any file attached, any links attached. It just talks about setting up a sponsorship opportunity. Uh, now, of course, one of the first dead giveaways is if you take a look at the online.ua, eh, that seems a little bit fishy to me. So once you reply here, which... I obviously know in this case, this is a fraudulent email. They're going to say, hey, thanks for your reply. Um, they're going to give me this official page. And then uh, they're going to say, hey, click on this link, watch this video. And they're going to give me $3,000, which that would be amazing. But of course, that's not true. So then they'll attach the zip file. And it's very similar for the other two emails. Uh, Typically, it's some sort of brand impersonation. In this case, they have Proton VPN. And to bypass the email filtering gateways here, if you actually go to the PDF, there's going to be a download file, which I'll get to that in a moment. So um, yeah, that there really isn't anything else here. Oftentimes, you will see that these emails are from uh, czechrepublic.cz domain. And yeah, so with that being said, let's get into my isolated malware environment and investigate what the heck happens when you click this file and execute it on your environment. All right, so here in front of me, I have an isolated Windows 10 virtual machine, and I have proceeded to download the three variants of malware. Now, I have a few uh, programs that I'm running in the background. I'll have Procmon as well as Wireshark, and I did download HXD. These are just some basic tools for malware analysis. So getting into the PDF files, uh, if you take a look here, oftentimes they'll have some sort of impersonation. And the way that they'll bypass, I'm guessing, the Gmail or your email filtering gateway is through this PDF. And they'll have a download. And of course, as you can see, it goes to a Dropbox link. Uh, this one, I believe, is going also to a Dropbox. So you download that and they'll give you some password protected zip file. So I go ahead and I've downloaded these three variants. Now, of course, in Linus Tech Tips uh, case, it was his YouTube channel that got hijacked. And I've, this has actually been a uh, something that's been happening over the course of a few years now. Um, so I have this random YouTube channel that I set up with a fake Google account. Uh, and I also, well, have a fake 
Gmail. So what I'm going to do is proceed to execute these three here and see what the heck is going on. But first, let me proceed to just turn on some analysis tools. So first off, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and capture on Ethernet Zero. Uh, just started this capture. I don't even know what's going on. Yep, there we go. Good to go. As well as opening up Procmon here. All right, so I have Procmon running. I have Wireshark running. Let's go ahead and see what the heck is going on here. So um, going back, if I can exit out of here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and completely cut off my internet access at this point, which, and again, in this way, I'm already running a virtual machine, but I am going to just cut it off completely with my ethernet. Okay, so that is gone. Um, now I can proceed to download this malware. So let's start out with the Zydac PCs. Here you're going to have this Zydac PC's terms and conditions. I'm going to copy that to the desktop. Using File Explorer's built-in extraction tool used to extract compressed files, I ran into this error. And, and this cryptic Windows error basically indicates several things, one of which is the password protection on an archive. And if you can recall from the malicious Proton VPN PDF, it instructed me to download WinRAR. So I went ahead, downloaded WinRAR, and then extracted the Surfshark in Zydac zip files. All right, perfect. So now we can see that the Surfshark uh, logo and video have been uploaded here. If we take a look at Procmon, I'm looking for anything that is perhaps a bit interesting. Uh, all right, so my camera just lost its battery. I converted over to my webcam and here in front of me, as you can see, I finally got one of these zip files to extract. So it's interesting that um, they include these types of branding. Uh, I always find that a bit interesting, I guess. I, I'm not sure why you would do that, but... Okay, so let's take a look into this here. Personal referral link and promotion. Uh, Double-clicking this, I'm interested to see what will happen. Um, let me see... All right, so if I take a look into the properties here, what you're going to see is a Word logo, uh, which is quite interesting. SCR or Windows screensaver files should store graphic, animation, slideshow, or some sort of video file that can be used on a Windows screensaver when your device is inactive for some time. Now, screen files are also executable files, meaning that these are great places to host a malicious binary. Hence why I'm seeing an SCR file impersonating a Word or PDF document in this case. Considering um, that it's a screensaver type, like I said. Um, so putting this into here, uh, what I'm interested to see in HXD is, well, what's going on? Lots of, mm, well, lots of nothing. Um, so, my Procmon instance just closed, which is quite interesting. Uh, I proceeded to check out Procmon for any common file path locations typically used by uh, malware, and using the Procmon's process tree, I was able to see processes in the child processes, and I ended up finding something in the Zydax PDF process. So this is certainly an interesting find. I have no idea if this is implying anything, but in this Zydax PC's promotion content, which is this screen file, there's actually a background process happening, which is con host. Now I took a look at con host and basically it's just a terminal uh, that is run. All right, so interesting thing here, it eventually changed itself to the Windows logo. Um, when you double click this, nothing tends to happen. Uh, I'm looking for any malicious processes that are running in the background. So each time that I click the screensaver file, um, Procmon is actually closed out. So if you look at HXD, there isn't anything in particular that I'm looking for. I just wanted to see if there was any, I don't know, any any indicators of, of malware. Um, that is certainly interesting that uh, the PDF file is running uh, a con host or console host 
I extracted all three zip files, and while looking at Task Manager for any background processes, Windows Defender flagged the SCR file as a malicious process running. All right, so it looks like Microsoft found that this is the Redline Trojan, uh, which is certainly interesting. So um, I actually did know this before creating this video that this was the Redline Trojan. It's a pretty popular Trojan. So while disabling Windows Defender, I got the blue screen of death. So my Wireshark PCAP file and everything else was gone. And at first I was like, oh, this could be part of the malware, but really it's just my crappy gaming old PC. So after firing everything back up, I reran one of the uh, screen files and dug into Wireshark. Unfortunately, there wasn't really anything that stood out. I tried looking into the SOAP Action HTTP header, one of the well-known and probably older indicators of compromise for the Redline Trojan uh, for C2 communications, and, and I couldn't find anything. All right, so it appears that uh, all three of these zip files are dropping the Redline Trojan Stealer, which can be rented for 150 to 200 bucks on some dark web forms. So at this point, all three source files were running, and as you can tell, each one runs an invisible terminal via conhost and hooks into different executables, including ntvdm.exe. This is an old system component that allows one to run a 16-bit Windows application on a 32-bit Windows OS. So taking a look at this bleeping computer article here, it shows that ntvdm.exe is an undesirable program, and well, at this point, I figured, yeah, that's the malware. And looking into each of these processes, as you can see, um, this NTDVMAXE, as well as the Zydex PC uh, PDF, I mean, it's not really a PDF, are all running Conhost, which is uh, obviously an indicator that something is going wrong here. After this, I poked around various locations on the file system via File Explorer, and, uh, well, I determined to call it there. A brief note about Redline. So the Redline Stealer Trojan has been around for a few years. Typically, cyber criminals can buy a version for 150 to 200 US dollars. Redline has a lot of functionality, and one of which is actually collecting logins, password cookies, and session tokens for browsers. And this is actually how Linus Tech Tips was hacked. Uh, session tokens allow you to bypass traditional password and MFA-based logins. All right, so about an hour and a half later, as you can tell, my malware analysis skills are like complete noob. Um, but I was able to find out that, of course, it's the Redline Trojan malware. Basic internet search can tell you the indicators of compromise. And uh, yeah, so be wary of sponsorship stuff. Uh, don't go out there and be clicking sponsorship links. The Redline uh, Trojan has been known to, um, you know, infiltrate all kinds of different things and sponsorships is just one of probably many distribution campaigns um, that threat actors can use. Um, so yeah, this project has been fun and uh, well, hopefully you've learned well something new, uh, even if it's just something small. Yeah. And uh, until the next video, have a good day.